This short video in a series called Navigation by Any Means will deal with navigating by celestial bodies. By celestial bodies I mean the sun, the moon and of course the stars. We'll start the video by looking at the sun. The sun is essentially much much larger than the earth. You could fit a million earths into the sun. It's incredibly far away in fact, roughly 150 million kilometers away. But it appears like the Sun is very much smaller than the Earth and as if it rotates about the Earth. The exact opposite of, is of course true. The Earth rotates about the Sun and the equator of the Earth is on the plane, the same plane as the plane of rotation about the Sun as the Earth orbits about the Sun. So basically what it means is that the Sun appears to move along the Earth's equator from an observer's point of view. So if you're standing on the equator and you're looking east, the sun will rise in the east, it'll move up above you and at midday or noon uh, the sun will be directly above you and then it will begin to descend again towards the west where it will set. So that's uh, the typical perspective for somebody who's actually standing on the equator. It's slightly different though when one moves to either the northern hemisphere or the southern hemisphere. Here we have a few images of sunrises and sunsets. If you're standing at the equator in the center there and you're looking east towards the sunrise, you'll see the sunrise in the east and you'll see it set in the west. But as it moves along its path or trajectory, if you're standing in the northern hemisphere, it means you're north of the equator and you're looking down towards the equator. And in that case, your perspective will be that the sun is arcing across the sky and at noon is directly south of you in terms of your position. So it's a good way to use the sun uh, to find direction. You know that at precisely at noon, the sun is going to be directly south of you if you are in the northern hemisphere. However, in the southern hemisphere, if you're standing in the southern hemisphere facing the equator, the sun is going to rise in the east as usual, arc across the sky towards the northern side of you and then set in the west, which means that at midday the sun will be directly north of you. And that's just something to keep in mind. So these are very simple ways to use the sun as a form of uh, direction finding for navigation. Navigation and orientation by the moon. The moon can be used in a number of ways to orientate. First of all, at full moon, the moon rises in the, in the east as the sun is setting in the west. And it's always like that. So at full moon, the, as the sun is setting in the west, the moon will always be rising in the east. So if you draw a line, um, you can either look at the direction the moon's rising on the equator. If the moon's risen a little bit, um, you can kind of draw a line in line with its uh, reflection in the water and that will roughly be east. Of course remembering that the moon will start to arc slightly as it rises. Here we have another method of finding direction using the moon. The moon can be used to find north or south depending on which hemisphere you're in. Basically the way it works is if you have a half moon or a crescent moon and you draw a line through the pointed ends of the crescent or the ends of the half moon and you extend that line down to the horizon if you're in the southern hemisphere it will point to true north if you're in the northern hemisphere it will point directly true south and um, that's just one way apart from the rising of the moon and the setting of the moon that gives you an indica indication of direction Navigation and orientation by the stars. The simplest way to measure the direction using the stars is actually to use a kind of observing post. So what you do is you take two, two poles, one roughly six foot long and one a little bit shorter, and you line them up um, in the ground to a particular star that you want to observe. And you look along the tops of the poles so that the star is aligned with the tops of both poles and with your eye and 
and then you stand for a few seconds or minutes and observe the movement of the star as time progresses. As you view the star, if you're looking east, the star will appear to rise from your perspective. If you're looking west, the star will appear to drop or sink from your perspective. If you're looking north, the stars will appear to move to your left because they rotate in an anti-clockwise direction around the North Pole. Likewise, if you're staring south, uh, the stars will appear to move towards your right because they're moving in a clockwise direction around the South Pole. Now we're going to look at how to find direction, particularly the direction of north by various constellations. This is the Little Dipper, which is an asterism of the constellation Ursa Minor. An asterism is basically a group of stars that appear to be a constellation but are part of a, a larger constellation. So they're actually part of Ursa Minor, but it appears to be an object called the Little Dipper. At the tip of the pan handle or Little Dipper is a star called Polaris. Um, this is called the Pole Star and there's a very good reason because this star appears to sit right on the celestial North Pole and doesn't move very much at all um, throughout the night. The other stars rotate about that point, the celestial North Point uh, in the sky. So all the other members of the Little Dipper asterism will rotate in an anti-clockwise fashion around Polaris um, throughout the night. So it's almost like um, a clock working, but in an anti-clockwise direction. So the pole star is a way to find direction, uh, the direction of north. To find the pole star, you might need to use a, a few other constellations. And there are two kind of ways to do that. Well, there are several ways, but two of them are primary ways are through the Big Dipper and through Cassiopeia. We'll start with the Big Dipper. The Big Dipper is another example of an asterism. It's part of Ursa Major, which is the Big Bear. And it has a pan handle or um, dipping pot shape. There are two stars at the one end called Dubby and Merak. Dubby means a bear and Merak is the flank of a bear. And essentially these are pointer stars that will help you to find Polaris. If you take the two pointer stars and you take the distance between them and measure that and you extend a line from there out into the sky, you will eventually come across Polaris. In fact, the distance between those stars, if you extend that distance five times, it will take you straight to the, the exact position roughly of Polaris. Another way to find the pole star using another constellation is to use Cassiopeia. Cassiopeia is a series of stars that form a kind of W or an M depending on your, your position or your perspective. It also rotates in the sky at about the North Pole and it will rotate in an anti-clockwise direction. So what you do is you take the distance from the two endmost stars in other words, the opposite two stars in Cassiopeia constellation, and you, you measure that distance, and then you turn it down through 90 degrees, and you double the distance, and that will lead you to Polaris. So once again, you take the distance between the two distantmost stars in the constellation of Cassiopeia, you turn it through 90 degrees, and double that distance and you will have Polaris. If you want to find the direction of south using the Southern Cross, that's assuming of course you're in the Southern Hemisphere or very close to the equator in the Northern Hemisphere, you'll be able to see the Southern Cross. It's uh, a cross or kite and it lies essentially within the belly of the constellation Centaurus. And then you'll see the two stars at the foot of the centaur, the front leg, 
Rigel, Centaurus, and Hadar, which are Alpha and Beta Centauri respectively, and those are called pointer stars, and they'll be very useful in helping you to find the direction of south. Um, we'll go over that right now. So here we have a different perspective of a Southern Cross or Kite, as it's sometimes called. It's comprised of four stars which form a cross or kite and then you have the two pointer stars Alpha Centauri and Beta Centauri. Alpha Centauri being Rigel Centaurus and Beta Centauri being Hadar. If you draw a line through the long axis of the kite and you extend it along the sky it will point in the direction of uh, the celestial south pole. If you extend that line by one two, three, four, and a half times the distance between the two stars in the long axis of the Southern Cross, you will eventually get to a position in the sky which is roughly equivalent to the Celestial South Pole. Another way of doing finding south is to once again extend the line through the long axis of the Southern Cross and then draw a line perpendicular to the line joining the two pointer stars and where those two lines meet in the sky you will get the celestial south pole so you just drop a, a line down from perpendicularly from the celestial south pole to the horizon and that gives you the direction of south So there we go, the two methods using the Southern Cross for finding south. Thank you very much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Please like and subscribe to my channel and I'll try to get some more informative videos out to you.